Yo, uh, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sensor with a video here today bringing us a brand new video how to make your very own clean, super dope stream revamp. So I'm going to show you guys basically in this video how to make yourself an animation screen, an offline screen, and hopefully you can do a stream ending screen with that as well, some panels, and you guys get yourself on your way to make some really cool sort of idea, and hopefully you can just make yourselves look really good for your Twitch and start off with 2021 with the right foot, and or just make something because you want to refresh the whole stream. So with that being said, if you guys do enjoy this video, do not forget to leave a like on the video. Of course, it helps the video itself. And of course, comment down below anything you want to see me do personally, maybe a style of some sort that you guys really, really love and enjoy. But with that being said, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the video. Peace. All right, guys. So let's get this thing started right here, right now with the intermission screen. Now, break it down. Of course, there's a kind of a few things to just keep in mind. Realistically, I am using this kind of dark blue and like baby blue esque uh, kind of color scheme here. Realistically, you can use whatever the heck you guys want to use. You don't have to have a white background. You can just basically follow this exact same sort of like way I compose it with the shapes, and then fill your own colors in and just call it, you know, there. But for the most part, I'm gonna show you guys how to break this down, do it right now, and let's just uh, let's just hop right into it. All right, so for the actual document size, we're going to be in File, New, and then before we press Create, you guys want to type in 1920 pixels by 1080 height, and your resolution is at 300. That's basically the, the document size for all the things you're going to end up doing for like offline screen, intermission screen, etc. right? Even like your overlay as well, you want to probably create in there as well. But you can press Create, but I already have, of course, my document size in here. Now, the second thing I actually want to go ahead and do is, of course, get my colors ready. The colors that I have here are this hex tone right here, so it's four zeros, 21 for this hex tone for this nice dark blue. Then for the second color that I'm basically using today's tutorial is 14B8FF. So if you were to type these exact numbers in, you get the exact same colors if you really like my colors. And maybe we want to just kind of take the hue bar and move it just like so. That way you get the same kind of like lightness and darkness tones. That's just up to you. However, what I would also recommend you do is make a new layer. So you can press Control, Shift, and N to make a new layer really quickly. Or of course, just just click this button down here, right? I'm gonna fill in any color, what does it, it doesn't matter what it is, so I'm gonna press Control Backspace, that'll quick fill in my background color. So with this, I'm gonna right click and convert to Smart Object on this layer. This layer is basically gonna now act as my webcam sort of like dimension size, right? Because usually most dimension size for webcams happen to be 19 by 1080 as well, so 1080p quality, right? So if I were to press Control T on my keyboard, right, I can shrink this down from the corner, then I can basically say, hey, whatever size I want this to kind of be, I'm gonna say right around here is pretty good, right? That'll be basically where your webcam is gonna be cut out from. Perfect, right? So now with this, then you can kind of use this. I'm gonna press Control U, make it black because I just don't want it to kind of get in the way and just kind of just set its own like precedence on the actual um, document size. But with this being said, now I'm gonna make a new layer. And with this, I can just go ahead and just start making my shapes. So I have my first shape, also I have the same thing over here so I can get close enough. Um, first shape I have is this sort of like triangle going behind the actual canvas, right? Or behind the actual, how do you say, uh, webcam, right? So, so you can either right click, fill, drop down, use color, and then select your color right here, press OK, press OK, and then right click, deselect. Kind of a lot of steps. I personally just like to go ahead and say when my pen tool is closed and my path is ready to go, I press Control Enter to enter a quick selection mode. So what that means is basically any color I want to fill in there really quickly, like so. Since my foreground color is the black that I'm or the darker blue I'm gonna be using, since it is that color already, I can just press Alt Backspace and that will fill in the background. Uh, excuse me, the foreground color. So it makes it a lot more quicker. And I press Control D to deselect and then I get rid of the marquee tool selection. So that's gonna be doing this tutorial. So if you get wondered or wonder why I'm not like uh like using right click fill, that's why. So new layer, right? Let's do the same thing over here again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something. I think it's almost like right here, right? We'll go right here, right? Just something like that. I'm probably gonna get close enough. I'm probably not the exact same, but I think it'll work for whatever reason. So boom, boom, right? See how quick that is? It's way more easier in my opinion. So I can do the top portion now as well, new layer. The top portion kind of says we're going here, right? Then we're gonna kind of do this little strike down here and then end right here. Control enter, uh, control backspace, boom, new layer again, do the same thing over here. Uh -huh. Let's say right around here, if that works. I just wanna get it close enough, so I just wanna keep looking. Um, so boom, now I gotta have that right here, so if I wanna ever go ahead and go into it and kinda like move things around, by the way, if you were to move things around and like say, hey, I don't like how that kind of like lines up this way or that way, whatever way, right? If you don't like it, of course, when you do end up making it bigger and smaller, if you guys were to look here, it's probably not that much of a difference, but you probably do want to actually repen tool it. So I'm going to repen tool it right now for myself, just because I know I made it a little bit bigger, stretched it, whatever. So I'm going to do that. Perfect. Now I did that one. I'm going to do this last one over here on this right hand side, where I just make this nice little cut just going down right here. And then we fill that in. And I'll fill this in with a darker color here, because it kind of like matches it all, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just type in the word intermission. 
right? Intermission. And then we'll type in the word stream right above it, right? Just like so, stream. And for this color scheme, I have the word intermission being this dark dark blue here. And I'm gonna have this color, the stream color, be the uh, color of this north lighter blue. Then I'll just press Control T, free transform this a little bit further down. So it's just a little more, more of a subtext, right? Because it's obviously you're in a stream, but the stream intermission kind of stack just looks pretty good, right? Just like so. And I'm gonna say, boom. Then I'll just add all in the sort of like right hand stuff. So I'm gonna say, hey, recent follower, recent subscriber and recent donator, right? And so for you, you might want to have like your recent bits, recent subscriber, or top donator, whatever you want to have on your stream being labeled when you're in an intermission type of uh, scenario where you want to talk face to face. This is what you probably want to end up having. And then realistically, that's pretty much done there. Now, I'm also going to have to do is uh, I'm going to get the example here and get this uh, picture in here. That way you guys see an example really quick. Now, the reason why I did that is I want to show you guys really quickly. So this is the camera box, right? I just basically click mask my quick little uh, picture of myself onto this actual box. I'm going to press Alt, drag this camera layer right below this. While I'm holding Alt, it'll make a duplicate of that layer. So then I'm going to use my arrow keys, right, with a down arrow a few times, just like so, just so I can see just a little bit. Then I'm going to double click, just like so, go to color overlay, change this color to a nice baby blue here, or whatever secondary color you end up using, right? Then I'm going to go ahead and just double click one more time. We're gonna use a drop shadow, and on this drop shadow, you're gonna have basically the color on black. Your opacity, let's leave it on 20 to make it even, right? 20, your angle's at 90, 20 distance, zero spread, and 15 uh, size, just like so, press OK. Now when we come out a little bit, you'll see the camera's almost feeling like it's floating a little bit above the actual um, white background scenario, which looks pretty good. Then lastly, to kind of finish this baby off, right? The animation's great at least. Um, we're gonna press another new layer, take our pen tool, make these really nice, quick, and sort of like fun little, you know, kind of the same cuts and idea. So I'm going to say right here, I'm going to make a nice, cool little cut right here, right? Go down this way, right? What I'm going to end up doing with this, I'm going to press Control Enter once again. I'm going to fill this in with a darker color of our choice, right? I'm going to press Control U, right? Or you can either just right click fill with black, by the way, because that's basically what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take the lightness, bring it all the way down to negative 100. That makes it pure black, right? Press OK. Then I'll take the fill, lower this down just enough so you can see a little bit. Right, it's nice, almost like a, a nice little shadow kind of idea here. About six or so fill. Then I'm gonna take this layer and use a layer mask. Now the layer mask basically says, hey, if I were to use a brush, right? You see how it's a black brush. It'll also change your colors automatically, as you can see, right? Click it, right, colors. When I click on this layer mask, it'll make it black and white by default. When I, right, the black brush will say, hey, if I click and erase, or excuse me, if I click, it'll erase. Now if I change my colors to white, which is you can also press X on your keyboard, right, to switch your colors. Boom, you can see how it's switching colors. White will then fill in. So I just take my black, just give it nice little cuts in these little uh, nice little areas, almost fade it off like a gradient. Just add a little more dynamic to it. And I think it looks pretty freaking good. And with that being said, as you as you can see, you're actually done. So the cool part about this and the way I set this thing up is you basically want to take your camera box, right? So this camera box and only whatever your picture, you're not gonna actually have a picture, so I'm gonna get rid of that for a second. But take your camera box, move it above everything, right? So it's above the top layer, the top top layer. Then you take your layer right below that, so whatever it ends up having to be. Right, you hold shift and you select the last layer, including the background. So I'm gonna take the background, unlock this by double clicking on it, pressing enter, right? So click the top layer, not the top layer, the, the one right below the camera layer. Hold shift, select the background layer as well. That'll select every layer in between. We're gonna press control G to put in a group. Now with this group here, we're gonna press control J to make a duplicate. Then we're gonna press control E to merge it all together. Then I can just take this old group, hide that one. Then I'm gonna hold control my keyboard select the thumbnail of the camera box just like so then i can hide the camera box then i go back to this bottom layer right here we made a duplicate of it right press delete on our keyboard and now you have a nice transparent background so when you save this you want to go to file export save for web you want to use png 24 right and then also make sure this transparency box is checked and then all you have to do is press save and your camera basically will go below the actual animation screen, something like this. Hopefully you kind of see it right now. And it looks pretty good, pretty clean. You can be like, yo guys, look, look over here. Thank you to what's his face or whatever to follow and whatever. So pretty clean, but let me show you guys how to make this actual animation screen. You're now offline screen really, really quickly. Okay, so as you guys just saw, as you guys just pretty much did is the intermission screen. So I'm literally gonna take things from this and just make the intermission screen or offline screen, excuse me, really, really quickly. So all you gotta do is I'm gonna get rid of my camera. Right, I'm also get rid of this little camera box here that has that drop shadow. So I'm just take those. You can delete those as well. I'll just delete them as well, just like so. Right? Then you have these other layers here. So I have these things in a nice little group for myself as well. So now besides having them lined up, I'm actually gonna have them now be laying down flat. Right? So I'm gonna take this, right? Go over here, be like boom. Right? And then recent follower, you wanna go like boom. 
right? And of course, you want to give enough space for the name to actually sit. So I'm gonna say, boom, that's good. Then we'll say over here where the uh, subscriber is. Is it, no, nope. make sure you line it up, right? Then hold shift. So basically I lined it up, right? Freely, line it up at the bottom of this. I'm basically lining up this with the bottom of this. Um, you see the purple lines kind of come up. Then what you can do is you can hold shift on your keyboard and then drag it. So holding shift and when you drag a certain direction, you can only go left and right perfectly and you can't go up and down. As you can see, I'm not, I cannot actually go up and down. So that is the reason why I'm holding shift, right? You give it enough space and I'll say pretty good. Of course, the subscriber doesn't have enough space. What I'm going to do, press control T to free transform and make it a little smaller, right? And I think putting it right around here would be a pretty good idea. Now you can have space here, space here and space here for your stuff. However, as you can see, we're gonna have to move some of this stuff over here. So I'm gonna, of course, kind of like give the same exact idea, but I think the idea here that we wanna kind of like accomplish is just to make it a little bit different, not the exact same. So what I'm gonna do is I might, I might take this one over here, redo it by just like literally just maybe make, make it more full, right? Like something like that, right? And then take the same color, fill that back, baby back in, right? Then I'll take this, hey, I wanna make this a little more bigger, let's say. Okay, we'll make it just like really, really big. As you notice, if you make it big, you're gonna have to probably go ahead and make a new layer and then just basically redraw on that same exact line roughly, right? That way you can get the same exact high quality as before because of course, if you make things bigger, the, it'll basically blur off, uh, blur, excuse me. And then you might have to just, of course, like you see me doing right now, quickly fill it back in with the right color and I get the lines looking clean again. So now that I have that, I'll just change this one over here as well to be something like, this is kind of cool, it works. I'm just gonna say, yo, fill this baby back in the right way, right? Something like that, as you see, right? Then I'll press a new layer, control enter, then um, alt backspace for me. Then I'll take this stream animation screen that was sitting on the top over here, make this bigger, just like so. And then I'll just say offline, right? Off line, I'll put it all, actually I won't put it in all capitals. I like the idea of having it look Nice and clean like that. Then I'll work, make the word offline really, really big. The word stream can just stay around here, just like so. Now this can be any port you wanna put like social medias or something like that, or be like, hey, uh, I stream, or maybe like a schedule idea. It'd be like, uh, stream, let's say if you like stream every day at six, seven o'clock, right? Stream at seven o'clock, right? Or seven PST, whatever your time zone is, boom. Stream at 7 PST so people know, yo, 7 PST, little reminder, little hiccup kind of idea of like, hey, I can go back and come back to the stream at 7 o'clock and it might be live, it might not, but just having that little stream sort of like schedule on the main page where people can see it immediately, it's probably a good call if you don't have, if you want to put any social media stuff on this. And just like that, ta-da, there's your offline screen. You just basically save it, save it the same exact way. File, export, save for web, PNG 24, not G, uh, JPEG, but boom, you save it and you're good to go. So last thing I wanna actually go uh, show you guys really quickly is how to make yourself some really clean panels, like something like this, which you should probably understand and know, but I'm gonna still show you guys anyway. All right, so to go ahead and make this panel here, this file size of dimension, excuse me, that I end up using in today's video is I went to file new and I used 600 by 300 and I put my resolution also at 300, right? Then I press create. So this, you kind of have a bigger panel size. Now be wary when it comes to panel size and stuff like that, you can actually stretch this to be as long as you realistically need it to be. And it'll kind of, it will still work the same exact way as you probably expect. But for me, for this style, at least I like the little sleek idea look. So for me, right, you can start off with this and be like, Hey, if you want things to be a little more bigger for like your computer specs or your about me section, you of course extend it by just taking the crop tool, which is C on your keyboard, highlight it if you need to really quickly, if it doesn't show you the, these uh, little kind of like anchors or handles here. Then you can just do it. You can take it and stretch this down by clicking and dragging just like so. And of course your background layer actually changed to the color of your background color as well. That's what this background color is. To quickly fill it in back to white, you just press control U on this background color. Then you take your lightness, bring it all the way up to 100. And then you guys you got yourself a white little white background again. So that's the idea if you guys wanna make bigger ones. But for me, I wanna make a smaller one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do it. Shrink this baby just like so, right? I'm gonna do a Twitter handle or a Twitter uh, one. So I'm gonna type in the word Twitter, right? For this, I'm gonna use that nice darker color here. Same exact idea, right? <clears throat> Twitter, just like so. Then I'll put the word follow my, right? So they'd be like, yo, follow my Twitter or like whatever you wanna put. You can put whatever you wanna do, right? I'm gonna go ahead and put that nice color on this as well, right? Also, if you didn't know, you can actually quick fill your uh, text color as well. So you can see I just quickly filled it in. I not, not have to go to here, right? Choose this color, choose blue. I can just press Alt Backspace and Control Backspace to quickly fill in the colors that already have selected. So that's why I want to really give you guys the idea to have your codes already in there so that way you don't have to actually change them or do anything crazy and just 
work a lot faster in my opinion, right? Then I'm gonna go ahead and press Control V because I have this logo copied already. Now this logo here, I'm gonna take the same exact idea, make a new layer right above my background layer. Take this, we're gonna go cut, cut, boom. Right, and I also wanna make sure I kind of follow this line here, so I'm gonna make it more like parallel, not so much going up, because this kind of looks a little bit awkward in my opinion. Um, you might be like, I don't get it, but for me, I would just say kind of keep these lines parallel when you do a cut, because it will make it feel a lot better in my opinion, but of course your opinion is also valid, so whatever you wanna do, go for it, right? So I'm gonna say, boom, that cut's good. We're gonna make another new layer. We'll do one right here, right? Just like so, and this will be the darker color, right? Then I can go ahead and say, yo, I need another one right below everything, just like this. And I'll just make a nice cut one going this way, right? Then I'll also make a nice cut one going this way, right? Then I'll fill this in with a darker color, remember? Control U, lightness all the way down. Then I'll take the fill, lower this down, take this layer mask, take my brush, soft brush, use black, and then I'll just go ahead and erase a little bit. Now it might be a little bit too much, but I mean, realistically, it's just a little bit, we're adding just a little, little things because everything else is already clean. We don't have to mess around with anything too much, but I'll take this logo, copy it by holding Alt, drag it right below, right? I'm gonna press Control T to make it bigger, right? Move it off to the left-hand side a little bit. Take the fill, lower it down to zero. This basically makes the actual layer invisible, but all the layer styles that you put on it won't be invisible. So I'm gonna go ahead and just now double click on this layer after I change the name, double click on this layer, go to stroke, then I'll change the color, of course, to this nice darker uh, light blue, take the position on inside, I get better kind of like, how do you say a stroke, better, a better stroke look. So take this, put the size at one, press okay, and you guys got yourselves a nice little panel. So for this, all you have to do is really say, hey, if I wanna do Instagram, this change to Instagram. Of course, you wanna say follow my Instagram, or maybe you wanna say visit my Instagram, right? Then you have visit my, then you just change the logo, of course. You can still do the same stroke thing of most logos anyway. If you can't, you don't really have to. But uh, yeah, that's all you would have to do. And if you wanna make it even more personable, maybe you say, hey, since blue worked, I did obviously the blue because it was Twitter and already works. However, if you wanna change this to the color to a nice little color of like an orange or a purple, as you would see on an Instagram logo, right? You, would, can, you can also do that, right? You can change that to orange. Of course, you have to change the stroke to orange as well, or you can even put a gradient if you want to, but realistically, that's what I would probably want you to do because it would give the actual, the idea a lot more just kind of like, it, it might look like you put a little more effort in because you did and overall looks a little bit better. So I would probably suggest that. But uh, yeah, you would basically follow it or save it the same exact way with save for web. That's it. So that is how simple and easy you can make this really cool revamp for yourselves. Really nice and clean. Also, of course, you don't have to change and use my exact colors, but I would suggest you guys to use your own colors of an eye for an idea. Um, maybe you want to use like some oranges and blues. That's a really nice color scheme or some greens and orange. Something else so that you don't look exactly the same as other, other people who might end up doing this tutorial. But with that being said, I am done with today's video. I think I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope I got it kind of clean, kind of clean cut, made it a lot more easier for you guys to follow, especially if you guys are also new in Photoshop. But I'm aware I do talk a little fast sometimes or most times or all the time. But hopefully it was something for you guys to follow. But with that being said, I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Since so HQ out. Now we get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking better, guys. Later. Much love. Peace. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Love you. Later.